Hello guys, and I'm just going to run you over the update that I've got on my um, home lab setup here. So I've tidied up some of the cables by getting these shorter patch cables here. We've also got a, um, a new network switch, which is all SFP ports, as you can see there. Now I do need to get, um, it's weird, it only came with one half of a rack mount bracket. So I need to get another one for the other side um, to fit this into the rack. <clears throat> I'll probably make this into kind of something with a cable access so I can bring the cable through like I have there. Um, so what I've done is I've separated up actually. So the ports, these four over here, are connected up to my home network on a different subnet. And then everything on, on here is all connected to the um, subnet, which goes to all of my Raspberry Pis. So all the Raspberry Pis down here, which is my um, SQL server, I've got three worker nodes. And I've got three head nodes. So this is a fully redundant um, Kubernetes setup. I've got a Raspberry Pi running Rancher. So the SQL server is basically um, where all of the data um, for the um, head nodes, for the Kubernetes head nodes, um, is all being stored. So this is full redundancy. If one of these um, head nodes goes down, the other will take over as the coordinator for the Kubernetes cluster and all of the data is all stored on this SQL server. So they're all, they're all gonna be using the same um, server here. So uh, now for full, full redundancy, I'd have another SQL server, which is mirrored, um, and I'd switch between the two. If the server went down, for example, um, it would have a backup to run from. So it's not complete redundancy, but um, yeah, this is not a, um, an actual real life setup. Um, it is just for playing around with and uh, it just fitted nicely to have it set up like this. Now I could add another SQL server, I guess, to Rancher here, and I could um, put Rancher on there and then have this redundancy of Rancher and the SQL. Maybe I'll do that at some point. Um, on this shelf here, actually buried inside there are two Raspberry Pis, which are running Pi Hole. Again, I've got redundancy there. That's my DNS server for the house. And um, there's redundancy. So if one goes down, the other one will take over. All of these Pis are all powered by the PoE. Those Pis are powered separately by, by separate power, um, purely because I couldn't find a small enough PoE switch to fit in this rack, which would power everything. Um, now, I could get another one of these. I do have space available, but I'm going to be putting a few more things in here. Um, so I, I do want to add into here at least one mini PC, um, which will be um, running a VM. And then I've got another Pi here. This one is got the AI hat on it. So that's actually connected up to this camera here. And we can do some image recognition and stuff with that, which I'll do a video on. And then up here, I got this little touch screen display, which at the moment is showing Grafana data for the Kubernetes cluster. So I can see all my, my nodes, CPU temperatures, number of cores being used, total number of cluster memory available, and so on is all there. Um, coming around the back here then, I've got not being used at the moment, there's a 620 watt USB um, power supply there. And then I've got this little Netio um, PDU, which I'm going to get some brackets made for so I can actually mount that in the rack. And uh, this has got four switchable outlets. It's also got power metering built into it. I haven't set this up yet. It's connected to the network. I don't know its IP address yet. So I will do a video on that and that will be able to power monitor everything. And then I've got this power strip here mounted on the back there. Um, which has got everything plugged into it and I've got no available slots, but I do have some slots here, so I could power something else from there. And I may, uh, these two Raspberry Pis here could be powered by this USB power supply, I think. So, um, once I get a cable to get that sorted out. So this now is also connected up to my NAS. So I've got a Ugreen NAS here. I'm just waiting for the hard drives to arrive. Um, so nice thing is this actually just happens to be exactly the same depth. So I could uh, actually stack a few of these up here and it would look like one kind of meant to be block. I could even probably build another frame kind of case to, to, to carry it all in if I wanted. Um, the plastic top that comes with um, the um, rack here, this mini rack, is bowing a bit and, and I'm, I'm not so happy with that. So I'm probably going to get a metal top made for there. Um, still a bit more tidying up of cables to do. All these power cables as well are a little long. I may cut those and reduce the lengths of these 
so I could just tidy that up. And my pie holes and so on, I am gonna, get, again, get a proper shelf made that I can mount those on. Um, and here as well, I'm gonna um, redo these. So this is what it came with, um, but it didn't quite fit. Uh, when I put the PoE stack up board that takes an NVMe as well, so each one of these um, is kind of hot swappable, but I do have on these a NVMe and a, um, it's a dual NVMe and PoE stack up. If I slide this out, you'll see what I mean. So we've got the NVMe on there and the PoE. Um, so there's our NVMe drive there. And um, there's our, our PoE on there, if you can see that. Okay. So these, yeah, as I said, they are kind of hot swappable, but um, I had to change a little bit the way they're mounted. Let me just screw this back in. I had to change a little bit the way they're mounted because of um, the height. They didn't quite fit properly. Um, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to get new um, panels, la laser cut for these. Excuse my camera work. I'm very amateur at this YouTube stuff. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get new faceplates cut for this that will mount everything just a little bit more tidier. Um, this also as well, I'll get a, a, a different um, plate cut for this. It's just a standard shelf that came with the rack. Um, so everything will get just a little bit more tidier, but I'm quite happy with how it is so far. Um, uh, this SFP switch allows me to connect up the high speed stuff. So the drive, uh, this Ugreen NAS does have two uh, network ports. So one of them I've got connected to the SFP, the faster one, which is the 10 gigabit one. And then the um, 2.5 gigabit is connected up to here. Um, so that's how I've got those kind of separated up. Uh, so then coming over to my laptop here, um, I bought this, which is a, um, it's pretty chunky, but it's a, um, gigabit, uh, a hundred gigabit adapter actually for the Thunderbolt. So, um, I can get speeds up to a hundred gigabit over this if the network supported it. Um, so that's, um, allows me to connect my, um, wired ethernet to the 10.1.5 network here. And then my Wi-Fi is going to the home network. So that's basically the setup. I'm quite happy with how it's coming along. Um, comment down below if you've got any suggestions or um, things that you'd like to see. Um, I've got videos that show you how I actually set up this Kubernetes cluster and everything on the pies, um, how I got the redundancy of the pie hole. And um, I'll probably be doing some, some videos, as I say, on the um, final setup when I get this Netio working. And uh, yeah tidied up a little bit more. Uh, then I will be adding some cooling to this. You'll notice there's no fans at the moment. So I've got some fans, I've also got some radiators and I've got this idea of putting um, chilled water through there from a little um, chiller and blowing, you know, kind of cold air into here and, and kind of super cooling the rack. So that might be a fun uh, project to do. So uh, keep tuned in, do like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.